Good morning. I welcome the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Um, today's Pentecost, and uh, I totally forgot to wear red. So, um, but uh, Pentecost is at Penta, 50. So it's 50 days after Passover. We, you know, we go for 50 days after Easter. Um, and it's a harvest festival, um, and, uh, or was in the Jewish uh, festivals. And, um, and it ends up being, we kind of celebrate the birthday of the church or the, uh, the giving of the Holy Spirit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. The other thing that I, I became clear this morning is that I call this a mattock. And other people call it different things. But this is what I grew up using it during the summer in various places around the farm and in Montreat, North Carolina. And it's a good digging tool. All right? And so that's what we need. We're, we may be trenching behind a lodge or digging at the beach. And, but uh, you can see this one's been used pretty good because <laughs> no, normally that should be kind of straight. <laughs> so I've gotten into a couple of things with it. <laughs> Before, I've broken some matic handles in my day. Other thing that I want you to uh, think about today, and the reason the baptismal font is out here front and center, is I want you to remember your baptism. And you'll have an opportunity, if you would like, to dip your finger in the water and kind of cross your forehead when you come to communion. I'm sorry, what? Yep. Thumbs are good. Bring Isaiah 43 up, please. This is what the Lord says. The one who created you... O Jacob, the one who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the, the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. The idea of redemption here really is almost an economic idea. It's it's. You are in debt, and I got you out of debt. <laughs> so I have redeemed you. I have bought you back. This is what you would do if you had a, 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 a precious thing at a pawn shop, and you would go and redeem it. <laughs> okay? You would buy it back. So God says, I have bought you back. I, I have brought you and bought you for myself. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And it's one of the ideas that, uh, that's in baptism. Baptism is a sign and seal of God's love for us, it's certainly the washing away of sins and the entering into a new life, but it's also this idea of uh, being named and known as God's, uh, as God's people and as a person who believes and follows God. So I invite you to come to worship, I invite you to be in this place to, uh, to sing and to pray, to hear the word uh, proclaimed. Um, and to act out the word, because that's really what a sacrament is uh, today um, for our service. We're going to begin by singing, Be Thou My Vision. Please stand and let us sing.
Please be seated. So a ministry that uh, uh, began somewhat uh, in this congregation, at least one of the initial meetings for this ministry happened down in our fellowship hall, is called Family Promise. Um, in Family Promise, uh, there is a Family Promise chapter of the Matsu Valley. There are some 80 or 90 affiliates, uh, probably more than that now. That's actually a number's a few years old. Uh, affiliates all across the United States in different communities. Um, and Family Promise houses uh, folks who uh, are without homes or without um, housing. And then they aim at family. So it, it needs to be a parent with a child or uh, someone expecting a child, um, some form of that. Um, the initial model was to house people in church buildings and have the church surround those people with dinner and some fellowship and some help during the week. They go to then a job center or a place where they can get child care, a place where they can look for jobs, a place where they can find housing. The normal stay in Family Promise is somewhere in the neighborhood of a few months, um, and, uh, and their success rate is rather high. In other words, once somebody kind of graduates from Family Promise, they usually stay in permanent housing for a good long while. Um, and uh, so we've been a supporter of Family Promise for a number of years. I think our next week uh, is coming up 1st of July. I don't know if you... All right, there you go. Lori Benner is, is often our uh, connection there and has really helped shepherd that ministry here. Um, and so our first week, and normally these days we're not housing folks in the building, but we are helping with meals and fellowship and just doing different things. I can also tell you that Family Promise is, is um, working on a low budget right now. So if, there's, if, it's a, if it's a ministry that you have donated to in the past or want to donate to again, uh, right now is a good time because uh, they're kind of at a low ebb just with their cash flow. Um, they are, uh, they, they've expanded some things, and they've got, we're given a new building, and that new building came with some blessings and uh, one curse. Um, and, and that it had some uh, dirt behind it that was contaminated, and so they are now chasing cleaning up that contaminated dirt, and if you've ever messed with that, once you start pouring chemical into the ground, it goes where it wants to go, and it goes further than you thought it did <laughs> normally. So the cleanup is just taking more time and therefore more money uh, for them. But um, uh, Family Promise has been a ministry, again, that we have been uh, have enjoyed supporting, and our members have, have been supportive of that uh, congregation as well. So we thank you for that. And, uh, we are taking the other visible uh, partnership that we're doing. As you'll notice, the Family Promise van is out in our parking lot, and uh, we'll be taking it to Bengal Camp and back uh, in the next week or so. So we, we partner, and they've let us you do that uh, several times. Are there uh, prayer concerns or celebrations this morning? Roy, go ahead. All right, a friend who, uh, a Vietnam vet who's suffering uh, from several illnesses related to his service. Yes, ma'am. Um, prayer Thanksgiving, because of my son in law, Chris is back home and he's doing very well after the uh, treatment for his heart. Good. So, Chris Marshall um, and, uh, has, has had some uh, heart issues ongoing for a number of years, and he's back home after some procedures. Good. Yes. I have a prayer of gratitude, and I just feel like it was one of God's miracles that uh, my friends that were in the uh, plane crash on the Matanuska River, um, they are fine. Uh, the little boy, uh, Enzo, was seven months old, and he was in the hospital just for observation for a couple of days. But uh, everyone is okay, and uh, just people were there to help them so quickly. And uh, I just feel like God has put the right thing. All right, so a prayer of gratitude for uh, uh, safety after a crash and a really quick community response uh, and, and neighbors responding there. Good. Yes, ma'am. Just 
Yeah, Mary Ann's going to be heading back to Ohio to care for her father's uh, remains and estate, uh, their remaining estate. Uh, and uh, so just prayers for safe travel and, and good effect to her work with there. Yes, ma'am. All right, so for Jeannie and uh, a niece who's uh, suffering with seizures and they're still looking for the cause, still trying to figure that out. Yes, ma'am. We are, Tom and his friend, are, they're hosting a basketball camp at Colony this week and there's teams from all over the state coming in. And you know, it's going to be about, I'm in charge of feeding them. There's about 500 teenage boys. So it's like, <laughs> it's a big week, but really it's, it's a chance for me to meet the families of the people that Tom coaches, and he gets to talk with a bunch of coaches around the state, which is good, but just that God would kind of shine through us this week, you know, whenever you're with a big group, that we could be a good light for him. Yeah, yeah, good deal, good for y'all, and, and yeah, prayers, I, I, you know, Tom deserves prayers, but Paula probably maybe more. Um, <laughs> The, and, the, and that big sucking sound that you'll hear over at the sports center is just this lunch. I mean, that's, so, so, yeah, good deal. Good deal. So prayers for that. That's a lot of activity. It's, and, it's, and it's positive activity. It's good activity. And, and uh, these coaches and players uh, working good. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, so Thanksgiving for health and, and being able to travel. I'm glad for your travel too. We're, we'll take about, there should be about 20 folks um, going on the highway today. We'll pick up uh, a couple more tonight and then one more tomorrow. So our group, the group that I'm kind of thinking I'm in charge of is about 23 of us. So, uh, you can keep us in your prayers. We'll be swinging Maddox and going swimming and doing all kinds of stuff this next week. Let us pray, and we'll close by saying the, the Lord's Prayer together. Lord, we thank you for uh, this time and this place, for our freedoms, for our ability to travel, for uh, our ability to, to uh, be able to take care of family uh, and to participate in camps and conferences, all of the different things that, that we're involved with. Uh, it, it's, it's work and it's responsibility, but it's also blessing and honor. And we give you praise for those opportunities to be your people uh, doing this kind of work and this kind of, of recreation and, and service. We would ask your blessing upon these that have been named that are sick or uh, maybe undergoing diagnostic work or preparing for treatments, all of the different ways and places that we find ourselves. Give the doctors and the nurses, the caregivers, give them good uh, effect for their work and, and uh, good decision making. Allow insurance forms and paperwork and all of those kind of things to be done well and get done in a timely fashion. We give you thanks again for that, uh, that health care and for that cadre of people who help uh, get us through those times. We thank you for uh, the, the summer here, <laughs> uh, for this nice weather. We're mindful of fire danger, and we ask your blessing in that area. Uh, we're mindful of, of, with a lot of people moving around, that there are car accidents and and rescue personnel that are helping out and moving around too. We pray for the, uh, the safety of those traveling and also the safety of those that help us when we have had an accident. Be present with us in our work, in our play, and certainly here in our worship this morning. In Christ's name we pray as the disciples learn to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take some time now and, and welcome one another to uh, the service today. I am going to camp. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta go get tucked in here.
so this song has an echo part to it. Uh, so you guys, you're going to follow me, and you guys over here are going to follow Meg. Uh, and uh, it's only on the chorus or the refrain that we repeat it, and we go through the refrain twice, uh, and then we sing the verse. But you guys are with me. Job. Have a seat, please. So a friend of mine wrote that song. Uh, boy, it'd be 35 years ago now. Um, and, uh, and he and I would sing it. He and I did some youth rallies together, and we, would, uh, we, we, would, uh, we worked in the same presbytery for a while, and so we would do presbytery reports together. And when we would put the presbytery report together, of course, we would, we would kind of do it as a variety show. <laughs> we wouldn't just read a report. That just didn't seem right to us. And so uh, we would sing and, and have activities in the midst of the report and stuff. But there was one particular time, and when you take Hebrew in seminary, 
uh, it's, uh, it's traditional for the men in the class, this is totally sexist, but for the men in the class to grow a beard. And there was a number of us that already had beards, of course, so we just, you know, let them grow a little more. But then there was a bunch of wannabes that tried to grow beards during Hebrew class. And, uh, and there was one particular day that it just happened at the seminary that I attended. There was this long walkway, and it had a really good brick wall that you could sit on. And so we were, there was about eight of us sitting on this brick wall, and all of us had beards. Wouldn't be a big deal here in Alaska, but in Virginia that was a little notable. And, uh, and so we, got the, we actually arranged ourselves from the, the eldest to the youngest and the, the most mature beard to the youngest beard. And then and people would walk by and just kind of look. So, but just reminded, the song reminded me of that. So, uh, so Pentecost is one of those celebrations where we uh, certainly borrowed it from uh, the Jewish calendar and, and the Hebrew people, and then uh, it has been kind of reshaped into uh, a Christian uh, punctuation point in in the yearly calendar. Uh, so it has Old Testament roots, but definitely a New Testament flavor and an idea. But I want to remind you of the story, first of all, and it's in the second chapter of the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, that would have been 50 days again after the Passover or 50 days after Easter, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And you'll see what it means here that this word other tongues is used a couple of different ways in the scriptures. This really is speaking about speaking in a different language. This is not, uh, there's another word for it called glossolalia. This is not the, the um, ecstatic uh, voice of the spirit that you'll sometimes see in in Pentecostal or charismatic churches but this is really speaking in another language that's the the miracle here now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven this would have been another festival that people from other countries and from all around the country would have come to Jerusalem similar to Passover when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans from the north part of the country of Israel? Then how is it that each of them hears, how is each of us hears them in their own native language? Then you've got this Long list, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, uh, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, those would really be outsiders. And we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues, amazed and perplexed. <laughs> They ask one another, what does this mean? When someone made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. So you've got this happening in the public square, in the, in the public arena, things that are making people go, all right, something's happening, and we're not sure where it's from or what it's about. All right? Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. In other words, they haven't had time to get drunk yet. <laughs> no, this is what this was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And now he goes back into the Old Testament. In the last days... God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. 
even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. The idea of prophecy here really is speaking what God has given us to say or speaking the words of God. That's really the idea behind the prophecy here. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. This is the, when we're, when we're talking about uh, the last days, he is talking about the last days. This is apocalyptic end of times vision. Something has happened to trigger these days, is what he's saying. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now the rest of the second chapter, I want to encourage you to read on your own later today or, or maybe even during communion because his, his sermon continues on and it's a great and wondrous uh, chapter. But that's the first part. The first, those first uh, 13 verses are the happening and then 14 through 21 is the beginning of Peter's sermon or Peter's speech. Wind, flame, proclamation, Peter's sermon, and the Spirit is poured out on men and women, on all people. Okay? Um, that's the happening of Pentecost. Now, Luke is, is big for beginnings, right? Luke wants to, and, and Luke, we believe, wrote the, Act, the book of Acts. And it's, I think, more appropriately called, rather than Acts of the Apostles, it's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit. I think that's what the book of Acts is. It's really the, whole, the Holy Spirit is the one. And if you look back at the Gospel of Luke, he's got plenty of the Holy Spirit there too. The Holy Spirit is the one that's active here. The Holy Spirit is making these things occur. God's Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that's the Holy Spirit. Um, but, but Luke loves beginnings and he loves getting things in order. So you've got this beautiful birth narrative, right? The beginning of Luke. He even goes back and gives you John the Baptist's birth narrative. He gives you some genealogy and then this story about John being born and the story about Mary and Elizabeth and then Jesus being born. The shepherds, the angels. He moves forward and he, and he talks about Jesus' baptism there at the Jordan River. And he tells a marvelous story about that. He tells the temptation narratives then following that. And then he gives this wonderful punctuation point, quoting from Isaiah, about the preaching of Jesus in the synagogues. I declare to you the good news of the Lord, right? The year of the favor from God. He gives an orderly account of the things that happened in the life of Christ. And we see the same thing happening here in the book of Acts and in the book of Pentecost. It really fits into the timeline, the birth in the life of Jesus, Jesus is alive. Easter, resurrection, Jesus is buried, then risen. Then we just celebrated, or if we'd, if we'd have celebrated in the church calendar, is the ascension. 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, he ascends, Christ in glory. Jesus goes back home. And now we've got Pentecost. 50 days after the resurrection, uh, harvest time. <laughs> That's what Pentecost, Pentecost is, if if Passover is kind of celebration from freedom or a little earlier they had the seed time festival this is the harvest festival Holy Spirit comes people are receiving that pouring out, that power so Pentecost as I said is a harvest festival, it's used to celebrate uh, it's also a place where the Jewish people uh, used to celebrate the giving of the Ten Commandments that's just kind of where they, they're in their church calendar and their uh, in their ways of teaching these things, it was when the Ten Commandments were celebrated. It celebrates the first fruits of the harvest, and then we have brought along and we celebrate the birthday of the church or the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, to be honest, the, the birthday of the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit both have roots all the way back into the Old Testament, and things had been happening before the day of Pentecost. But we use Pentecost as kind of a punctuation point, you know, just a, a time to celebrate those things. But what is clear about this text and what is clear about the timeline that Luke is providing us is that from this day, the disciples have moved into a very different place. They're no longer waiting in Jerusalem. Jesus had told them to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit had come. Jesus had told them to wait and, and you'll see the kingdom come. You'll see 
these things begin to happen. And what is clear is the disciples have now moved into that day. It's a new day filled with God's Spirit. God's Spirit has been poured out on people, and the church is proclaiming the good news in this ever-broadening circle. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem. You're going to be my witnesses in Samaria. You're going to be my witnesses in all the countryside and even to Rome and beyond. Here we see the beginning of that mission in the streets of Jerusalem. And I want you to note that the Holy Spirit is active in the streets, not just in the synagogue or the temple. Matter of fact, where this breaks loose is in the public arena. It's not in a quiet room. It's not in church. They came from church. They go back to church. It's the creation of the church. But it's time to spread the news and to live a life in the spirit. And that life is beyond the synagogue, beyond the congregation, beyond what we would call religious, you know, life. It's all of life. And look at Peter. Remember where we left Peter? Peter who couldn't even come to the cross. Peter who could not talk to a slave girl who said, aren't you one of them? And he denied it. Peter who got out of the boat and then sank in the water. Look where Peter is now. He steps forward. says, this man, whom you crucified, God has made son and Messiah. You need to listen to him. It's a new day. These folks are willing to do things and, and to take on responsibilities that they were no longer, they, they didn't before. There's no more waiting. Life in the spirit is here and it's now. And that's really the message that I want you to take away today. <laughs> it's those early bright days of the church when they had everything in common and they were sharing things and all of those kind of stuff. You can look at that in the last part of the second chapter. Those early bright days are the same days that you and I live in. We're still in the age of the church. We're still in that time frame where the Holy Spirit is loose <laughs> and poured out on people. That new day continues today. We live by the Spirit as well. And we are called and named in God's care and grace just as surely as those people were called to witness for God that day. You and I are called and named and known to serve this world and to show grace and love to an ever-broadening church in this day just as surely as they were in that day. We are to speak of repentance and of forgiveness, as Peter did. We are to speak of fulfilling promises and the birth of the church in these days. So this meal that we'll celebrate here in just a little bit, this meal reminds us of God's presence in our lives, not just, again, during this hour and, and during this time that we're in this space, in this building. I love this space in this building I love what it stands for. I love the things that are accomplished here. But it is meant to encourage us and to feed us to go outside. To do our work of the kingdom where we're playing and where we're working and where we're building our families and where we're pursuing a career or where we're volunteering in a community agency. You know, the, the Paula's prayer is that, that they... that in the manner in which they coach and feed and interact with this group of young men, that people would ask, what's going on here? <laughs> so, of the Spirit's real and tangible working in our lives, I want you to be aware of that this week. And think about how God is calling and working with you and the opportunities that you have. If you need the wind to blow through your life, then open the window. If you need to get fired up, set the fire, light the match. <laughs> you need to be washed over. 
this idea of, of the Spirit being poured out is that, is that image of being, you know, having water poured over or washed over you. Think about the best shower that you ever took, you know, when you were just really grungy and dirty and, and nasty and just stood there under the water for a second. Or maybe you've, you've sat in a river somewhere, I don't know. That's kind of a fun thing to do too. And maybe even you've stood under a waterfall. And if you've gotten a chance to do that, that's a pretty cool thing too. But that's the idea of just having water rush over you. Because that's the love of God. That's the image of baptism. And also of this pouring out of the Holy Spirit that occurred in Pentecost and continues to this day. So as we come to communion uh, today, again, I'll, I'll take the, the top off the baptismal uh, font there or bowl. And if you wish, you can just dip your finger in and, and cross yourself with that water and you can remind yourself of your own baptism. If you've not been baptized yet and you still want to do that, that's okay. Uh, that's, you're, you're welcome to do that. You're welcome at this table if, as you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're welcome here at this table. Uh, we've, got, we've got options for you. So if, if uh, the common loaf and the common cup, are, we've kind of put them back up on the table, but if you're more comfortable with the, the, the sealed cups, that have the communion bread and the, and the juice, we have those available as well. And there's even gluten-free uh, product up here. So you're invited to come down uh, and you'll serve yourself. Um, and, then, uh, and then if you'll exit by the outside aisle, I think we can make it through. If you need to uh, have some things brought to you, just remain in your seat. We'll pay attention to that. Or uh, if someone wants to carry it to you, that's fine too. Let us pray. Lord, we would ask that you again would pour out your spirit upon your people. Then indeed you would uh, cover us and, uh, and let that wind or let that flame, let that breath flow and fill us with your love with your grace, and with your mercy. That you would guide our words and guide our thoughts. That you would um, help us to discern uh, how to spend our time, our money, our energy, our talents. That indeed you would give us an awareness of ourselves, <laughs> an awareness of our families and those close by, and how best to affect uh, your kingdom and your will uh, in our own lives and in the lives of others that we, uh, that, that we uh, work with and have authority and responsibility uh, with. We would ask a full measure of your spirit for these days. For our, our world is troubled and our families are under uh, stress. And there are days that we don't know which way to turn. And so we're asking for your presence, and for your grace, and for your direction. And we know that is uh, in and through the Holy Spirit. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you goaded your people with a law and a land. When they were confounded with idols and lies, 
Then you spoke through the prophets to open their eyes. Lord, turn us from our sin. Turn us from those things which cause us to stumble and cling so closely. Enable us to let go of those things which cause us to uh, put up barriers between ourselves and you, between ourselves and other people. Take away our excuses. <laughs> Give us education and, uh, and knowledge and courage and discipline so that we may learn your way and follow your way. We ask forgiveness for our sins. We ask forgiveness for those times that we have been selfish, for those things that we have said when we should not have said something and for those times that we should have said something and yet we did not speak light your way for us step by step moment by moment spirit spirit of gentleness blow through the wilderness calling and free spirit spearless of restlessness stir me from placidness wind wind on the sea you sang in a stable you cried from a hill then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still and down in the city you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of the wind you call from tomorrow you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow the captives dream dreams our women see visions our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions your people arise on the night that he was betrayed jesus was with the disciples and he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it saying this is my body broken for you take and eat In a similar fashion, he took the cup, saying, this is the new covenant sealed in my blood. All of you drink from it. There we go. Let's see if we can get this in the right order. So again, I would invite you to come forward. You can either take a cup or tear a chunk off and dip that in the chalice. Um, and then you can return to your seat uh, by the outside aisle. And as you're coming forward, uh, you can dip your, your hand in the water. Remember your baptism if you choose to do that. We are not in a hurry. How many times have you been told that? But please, come.
Yeah, play for a couple of minutes would be great. Thank you.
So as I was singing this song this week, I, uh, I think of it truly being kind of the Holy Spirit singing it to us. to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear you will hear my voice I claim you as my choice be still and know I am here I am hope for all who are hopeless I am eyes for all who long to see In the shadows of the night I will be your light Come and rest in me Do not be afraid, I am with you I have called you each by name follow me I will bring you home love you and you are mine I have strength for all the despairing for the ones who dwell in shame and all the blind will see the lame will all run free and all will know my name I am the word that leads to all freedom I am the peace the world cannot give I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home, I love you and you are mine, I love you and you are Let us stand for our uh, closing hymn.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. This service is now concluded. Our service to the world in the name of Christ now begins.